worry Hell. about it. All the stuff that made it really shitty, you probably got that too. No big deal. <laughs> so Richard goes back to lamenting about having the gift and how he doesn't want it. Shota tries to get him to see that Zed's magic was passed down through that line too. So like, this is a this is a heritage thing, man. It's good. It's not bad. It's good. And he's like, yeah, just like a deformity. Like, whoa! <laughs> Easy there, Richard. <laughs> Fuck off, bud. <laughs> Deformity if it means having eight hands <laughs> that have fucking magic. <laughs> Come on, dude. It, it goes along with what you were saying. Like, I believe it was Jared yeah. raised the point that Richard sees magic as a crutch that he doesn't want people to think that he needs or even could use once in a while. Yeah. And this is definitely the manifestation of that. Yeah, in that vein. And Shota tells him that he should remember that he thinks of it as a deformity before he sticks it in Kalen. You don't want to pass shit down? Don't pass shit down. Ooh. Keep your shit in your pants. The uh, all-natural birth control. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Don't even do it. <laughs> if he has a boy, it's going to be a confessor and it's going to have both sides of the gift. It's going to be a motherfucking badass. You don't want one of those, do you? <laughs> yeah, you don't want a kid who at four years old looks up at you and goes, really, Dad? You want to fight about it? Because I'll win. Do you want to say, command me, master? Because I don't think you do. You better bend the knee, son. <laughs> Dad. This is on. <laughs> oh, gosh. So he set the house on fire again. <laughs> boys will be boys. Shona tells him that none of this really matters. She's actually there because she had told him that Darkin couldn't open a box. That was the whole fucking point of her warning to him. It wasn't that, oh, he can open one, just make sure he opens the right one. No, he wasn't supposed to open a goddamn box, Richard. And because he let him open a box, bad shit's happening now. He was supposed to get there before that. It would have been better if Dark and Raw would have won. I mean, there was no warning of any kind. Yeah. No, I guess that was that was what my point was. Maybe you should stop speaking in riddles and be fucking clear with people if right. you're gonna be like coming back to them a year later and be like, that wasn't what I meant. You said the day before winter. We got it done that day. <laughs> so like now you're telling me, but I was ten minutes late? Come on. <laughs> You didn't say, like, the world was going to be eaten by a demon if we didn't get it done. I would have been a little bit more careful. Right. I don't know how I would have been more careful, but I probably would have considered something. <laughs> exactly. It would have been a thought. Okay? Right. So, in case you haven't understood yet, Richard tore the veil by letting the magic of Orton out. If it tears enough, the Keeper... The dude himself, he can come to the world of life. He will be free. She says, basically, you have killed everybody. So, good job saving the world and all that. And then you doomed us all immediately after. So, um, fuck you for that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, were you still riding on any kind of high from, from that accomplishment? Because I want to let you know that it's a false narrative and you should switch <laughs> that shit up. Kaylin realizes that Shota's not angry. She's scared. She has tears running down her cheeks as she tells them how much the Keeper would love to get a witch woman. She tells Richard that he's the only one who can fix the veil. She's, like, sobbing and, like, punching his chest as she tells him that he needs to find a way. If not for her, then for him and for Kaylin. I mean, there's so much emotion there, and she's supposed to be this... Maybe not all powerful, but she's a very fucking powerful woman. And she's breaking down and sobbing and crying to Richard, who is like pretty powerful, but he's not witch woman powerful. No. And she's begging him to do something about. Can you imagine oh. what this sounds like outside the spirit house? <laughs> they are all standing out there in the dark like, should we go in? No. Who's going in no. first? I'm not going in there. <laughs> nah, we better just wait. They're fine. They're this, fine. This is fine. <laughs> this happens all the time. People just take over the church. <laughs> no big deal. Uh, but no, I mean, you do feel bad for Shona. Yeah. 
really bad. <laughs> I know I was feeling for Kaylin in the last chapter, and this one is, you know, Shona. But at the same time, who says Richard has to be the one to do all of this? She saw it. I mean, yeah, he is the hero, so obviously it's going to be Richard. But, like, who is she to beg him? Motherfucking witch woman. Is it, is it only because he's the only one that has a chance? I guess so. So if she's going to cry and beg somebody, it's going to be him. And maybe she doesn't have anybody else to cry and beg to. Who is stronger than a witch woman? Who would she be vulnerable with, hmm. if not him? No, that's actually a really valid point. <laughs> <laughs> but even while she's being semi-vulnerable, I mean, maybe it's not really vulnerable, because although she's crying, she is punching him this whole time. She's also calling him stupid <laughs> as he's, like, hugging her and trying to comfort her. That's a boxing move. I just want to go out and say it. She's hitting him in the chest, so he, like, pulls her in to stop her from hitting him. That's a boxing <laughs> thing. It's a total fight defense. It's a defense thing. <laughs> he knew what he was doing. Yeah. <laughs> well, she keeps crying about their souls being trapped forever. And Kaylin has this thought that I thought was weird. And she's like, this is fine. I'm not angry about this. I'm, <laughs> I'm not upset that Richard is comforting this woman. Um, good. Because if you were upset that he was comforting her right now, there would be a problem. Because, like, yeah, she's not trying to get your man, bro. She's, like, having a breakdown. Yeah, this is not... Uh, <laughs> I mean, this is not sexy. Is this what you think he's going for right now? <laughs> no, he wants the calm one. Trust me, he does. <laughs> I'm just saying, the woman isn't trying, this isn't a ploy, okay? She, she wasn't like, oh, I'm going to get in his lap and <laughs> look a fucking mess just to get him close to me. Right. Calm down, Caitlin. Put your card back in your pocket. Well, and here Shoda reveals the reason why she is so upset. She tells them that Screelings came into the reach with a wizard. A fucking nasty wizard. Even though we currently don't know any other wizards i mean that's what they say that's the only one so what who the, the fuck is it yeah uh Kaylin suggests that it was somebody pretending to be a wizard and shoda says no because he walked in jedi mind tricked me and now i'm not in my house and he is yeah so only a real wizard would be able to do that i know what the fuck i'm talking about thanks Kaylin. shut up right <laughs> Um, but the wizard being with the Screelings definitely means he's an agent. We know that's a thing because Dark and Rawl admitted to being an agent before he, like, got sucked into the underworld. Um, and that means basically you're working with the Keeper. Yeah. Um, the thing that they're all working on right now is to keep this veil tearing. They want to rip it open further to let the Keeper out. That's the ultimate goal. And I just want to I just want to throw out there that using the term veil makes me feel like it's probably super easy to, to tear cuz I went to get a hole in those things there's like that material just rips right apart. Yeah, very thin, stretchy. <laughs> <laughs> and bright gelatinous green. <laughs> no, gelatinous isn't really the word I was going for, but I don't hate it. But I mean kind of. <laughs> yeah. It looks ooey from a while from a ways away. <laughs> Apparently, it does take a wizard to tear the veil, but only wizard, only wizard. <clears throat> Apparently, it does take a wizard to tear the veil, but only Richard can fix the veil for some uh, reason. We don't know because he's the one. Yeah, he is Neo. <laughs> he's chosen. <laughs> oh wow! It's been a while since I've seen those fucking movies. Right? Oh, they're totally making another one. But Shoda says she's going to take the Reach back. She only came to tell him how stupid he was, and she's going to go kill the Keeper's agent. I mean, I felt way worse for her just 30 seconds ago when she was just sobbing into his, <laughs> you know, his arms. But now she's sobbing into his arms and calling him stupid. And it's like, well, hey, you could have stopped there and we would have been fine. But now you're calling me an idiot again. And now my empathy for you just drops. Like, okay, hey, no, you know what? <laughs> yeah, like, I I feel like Richard is above all these insults that he she's is. throwing. I'm not. <laughs> right. I feel like at some point, though, you got to be like, hey, I was just thrown into this. Like, 
a month and a half ago. So I feel like it's super rude of you to be using that stupid word so much. And maybe calm it down, at the very least. Otherwise, I'm going to freak out on you. Stupid. I mean, plus, you need me for something. So be fucking nice. Thanks. Yeah. Shoda tells Richard that she is going to take the gift from the Keeper's agent by ripping his skin off while the magic bleeds from him. Ooh, fun. (laughs) (laughs) Gosh. And then she's going to reupholster her throne with his skin. Oh, it's like, imagine. <laughs> no, I can't even. <laughs> That's so bad. Again, with the skinning and crafting. Terry must have just watched an Ed Gein doc or the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie mm-hmm. as he was writing this chapter. I mean, don't forget Buffalo Bill. Oh, and Buffalo. So, okay. He had to have had some type of horror night at home as this chapter was being formed in his head. He went, you know what? Yeah, okay, I can use that. You can use what? (laughs) Yeah, that sounds creepy. That'd be a good threat, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna use it. So Richard tells her that he needs help since he knows nothing about all of this. So Richard tells Shoda that he needs her help because he knows nothing about all of this. And Shoda says that all she knows is that he's going to be trapped in time. He's going to have to escape the trap to close the veil. And he has to learn something about the gift or everybody is fucked. Of course. It all comes back to the creepy three ladies from earlier in the book. <laughs> this is how it ties in. God damn it. Where's Carl to yell at when you need him? <laughs> uh, I feel like we can still yell at him. He's floating around somewhere. God damn it, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Shoda says she knows nothing else that's going to help him. Richard tells her about the headaches and the Sisters of Light, and all Shoda knows about that is that they have something to do with tra- is that they have something to do with training wizards. Which I mean, we knew that. Yeah, I like how Richard still checks her on it. She's like, "Yeah, I don't know anything else." He's like, "Okay, well, what about this, 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 the other? Th- am I getting anything? Any signals from the other side? What's going on? Nothing." I would have been super pissed if he didn't ask about this stuff, though. The oh, whole, yeah. The whole time. I was like, why didn't that come up first? Why didn't you stop her and be like, hey, wait, hold on. You're a magic person. Fix my headaches. Right. Well, the whole beginning of the conversation they had was all of Shoda's problems. Yeah. I mean, right. ultimately, kind of everybody's problems, but nothing about Richard. So he's just trying to get his in before this conversation's done. And I'm guessing once Shoda says this conversation is over, it's over. So you're not going to get another chance. A little less definitively than the sisters, but yeah, I guess. (laughs) Right. Yeah, holy shit. When they say (laughs) it's over, boy, it's over. So Richard asks if the sisters are the only way to control the gift, and Shota tells him, I don't fucking know, only that you have to control it or you're not going to get out of that trap and close the veil. That's all the fuck I know. Just take that. (laughs) Yep, that's all you get. Richard pleads with her to help him. He doesn't get any of this, and Shoda's like, I'm just as lost as you, maybe even worse, because I really don't have any influence on what happens, other than what I'm doing literally right now. This is the most I could do, was come and be like, hey, don't fuck her. (laughs) (laughs) Do something else with your energy. Go, go. (laughs) If she could help more, then she would. And you kind of believe her, since she only gave like one tiny riddle this whole time that she's been talking to them. Most of what she said was super easy to follow. The only riddle she gave was that thing about being trapped in time. So I'm inclined to believe her. She's she's trying her best. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, she hasn't killed anybody yet, so. True. Just like the Sisters of the Light, let's at least hear her out. <laughs> yeah. Richard and Shoda tell each other that they are afraid, and they kind of come together with that emotion a little bit. Shoda tells him. Dude, just don't fight who you are. I know I'm telling you some bad shit that you don't want to hear, and the world is big and scary, and you've got a lot of shit to do, but you're the dude you are, the chosen one, because of who you are. So just do that. Just be yourself, kid, and you'll be okay. (laughs) Chin up. Yeah. And then she tells Kaylin that she knows she's going to do her best to help Richard. And as she goes to leave, she tells Richard she's going to be forever grateful if he is able to close the veil. It seems like everybody's going to be just super nice. This is going to tie it up super nice, 
before she leaves. They're all getting along 